Hollywood Divas Season 1, Episode 4. I'm so tired of talking about Elise Neal and her damn um, great value assorted flavors. Let's go and get into this. Uh, this um, I'm about to say R&B Divas. So many damn Divas show, but we don't have no real Divas on there. On the only wannabes, okay? So let's go and talk about Hollywood Divas. Um, this episode was really good. This was better than Episode 3. Funny as shit. Funny as hell. So much shit to talk about, so let's go and get into it. Okay. Paula came in looking like a goddamn witch, okay? I don't understand why she... <laughs> How she she's trying to shoot a a she trying to shoot to somebody a witch project and some shit she working on she came in looking like the wicked witch I mean she scared the, the dude before he even got the shit together and thought about it but he told her that the witch idea is a fool because black people are very religious which they are even from seeing some of the stuff I've seen black people are very we're, we're some of the religious people and like we're like we just we don't we don't some of us not all of us we don't think um. Outside the box, like we're very conservative. A lot of us are really Republicans. We just really don't understand it. Um, but you know, that's a whole nother story, a whole nother video. I'm, I'm not gonna get into that. I mean, he was just telling her that you know that we're not gonna. It's not gonna be supported. It's not gonna be watched. And to be honest, Paula, Paula Park, whatever your name is, um, I just. I don't see you producing something of good quality for me to even go pay to see, let alone, I don't think if that shit came on TV one and I watched it as a commercial, I don't think I would want to watch the commercials because I just don't have that much faith in you to pull something off that's really good. So, you know, he told her that that shit is canceled, so she had to go back to the drawing board. Um, and I don't know what she's going to get a drawing board for because she can't, which I guess she's going to write on the floor because a carpet in her house already fucked the hell on up. Um... I love Countess Vaughn talking about her, you know, her going to get counseling. She was going to get counseling, and she was talking about the situation with, you know, she had to get an abortion, and somebody on the set of, I think it was 227, I'm not 100%, has said that she's very, she's um, fat, black, and she's ugly. And, you know, the one of the people that said, like, older people think like that. I'm not all of them, you know, but it's some, I can see that their way of thinking that, you know, I, I somebody in my family, Every, she doesn't. She doesn't like, and she's an older woman. I ain't gonna say her name. I, well, I am gonna say her name. My grandmother is like that a little bit on my um, father's side. She's just like that a little bit. Like she doesn't. I don't think she thinks brown, like black skin, is beautiful. And I've noticed that whenever she describes someone, she was describing somebody. She was saying, you know, he had pretty, pretty light skin and good hair, and just hearing her just made me itch. It just made me just cringe, and I just. I hated the way she said it because it was almost her saying, you know, that it has to be diluted a little Black has to be, you know, diluted a little bit for it to look beautiful. And I think that's a problem that some of us have. Even with the situation, I hate to get into other shit with Blue Ivy. A lot of people are saying how Blue Ivy, they expected her how to look. And, you know, it, it's just, it, it's, it's really quite sad. But I'm not going to talk about that. But I'm glad Countess Wynn got counseled. I'm glad she talked about it. She's over and she was talking about abortion. I'm glad to see her go on TV and get counseled because that's something I strongly believe in that um and that's something that we have to work on in the black community. A lot of us are very we don't believe going to get counseled and telling people our problems and stuff. We don't believe in that. And there's nothing wrong with going to get counseled. Hell my ass needed. Okay, I can't afford it and that shit is not it cover. I probably can't find some way with as far as the VA. But the thing with counseling, if you can talk to somebody it's good, but the thing about going to a counselor or a therapist it's, you know, it's no judgmental stuff. You don't know them. You know, they don't barely know you. They will after you get to talking. But they're not somebody that's going to go back and gossip and talk about it and hold that. You feel like they're going to hold that on to you. So I'm glad Countess got a chance to talk about that. I'm glad that they showed that. That was everything. Um, I just loved it. Um, so we move on. Countess going, she's going to Rainbows um, with her damn, her, well, she want to call her a stylist, but her damn best friend, okay? So they walked their ass Fuck rainbows. They went to Kato's fashion for big girls, okay? And child, that shit in there was terrible. All that shit looked very, very bad. I hated it. everything that was in that goddamn place. So she going to meet up with Elise. You know, they trying to kind of, everybody trying to help the big girl out, get her life together, all that type of shit. So Elise walk in with her friend, you know, Scott. And he was cute. Scott was cute. I liked Scott. He was, you know, talking and trying to help her out. And But it was, all that fashion, all that shit was late. All that shit looked terrible. And kind of just... Countess, you keep telling me you don't want to be the project, but you keep talking like you need help. Like, you keep talking like da-da-da. 
and you you're inviting them to offer you some type of help, like you're a damn lost child, you're the baby, and you need some help and all that kind of shit. You're not. You don't give me grown woman vibes. You don't give me. I got my shit together. This is what the. You're not authoritative at all. Like you just seem like you just lost. You don't know what the hell you want to do. You just look confused, and that's okay, baby. That's okay. We're gonna get you some help. Okay. See, I'm trying to fix your ass already. So. I feel like Todd, am I the only one that feels like Todd is trying to tell us something? Like this whole story with Forrest and Paula J's m mama, uh, that's, I'm going to call her Mama P. I just feel like Todd is slick trying to tell us something, and I find this shit very, very funny, okay? So they meeting up, and Mama just going in. Forrest, Paula, uh, Mama, and Paula just sitting there talking, and they like they had some rinky dink piccadilly or some shit, and they just having a conversation, talking about shit. And Paula J, Mama P, P is just going in. She just saying, you know, this was my condo. This was my shit. You, Paula bought me this condo, and y'all just so happened to move in. I'm just like, hmm. I understand what Paula, Miss uh, Mama P was talking about. You know, you know, don't be an Indian giver. Don't be sitting here giving shit and taking it back. You know, don't do that. But um, she was just basically telling Forrest he need to get a damn job. And Forrest talking about some way, you know, I'm there for her when she need me, da, da, da. Gary, you need to get your ass a damn job. You you know what, Forrest, your dust ass need to be at Home Depot fucking with some flower beds or somewhere picking up damn tools or something or chopping the keys up. Well, they got a kiosk now for that. I just don't see you as that type of, like, you need to be focused on some other shit. Like, a man that don't work don't eat. And Paula J., let me drag the shit out of your ass because all throughout you, da 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 But you instead of showing motherfucker that you struggling, instead of showing somebody you staying on shit stained carpet, you ain't got no washing machine to dry, your kitchen fucked up, your damn, you ain't got nowhere to put your dishes in, you got your damn clothes and garbage bags setting out, roaches and shit, having a field day in your shit, your damn toilet, you can't even take a shit, it's flooded like... You just expect somebody, well, I'm doing good. You know, I don't need no help. Bitch, yes, you do. All y'all ass need help on this damn show, to be honest. I hope the ratings are doing good. I hope y'all get some work for damn chick, because God knows y'all need it. Okay? Let me just go in. We got, uh, what's her name? Countess walking around with this goddamn dry-ass Tigris River on her damn head. And the Euphrates River. Every dry-ass river. That, that, that's going through a drought right now looks like it's on fucking Countess Vaughn's fucking head. I understand Countess had a situation with her weed with eating her goddamn scalp and eating her brain. I understand that. But there is no excuse for that shit to be looking like that on no damn TV. I, I, start, I thought it was a USB port. I thought it was a long USB port. I was about to plug my damn phone up, my iPad, my computer, my goddamn DVR box. I was about to plug and like a damn surge protector in the middle of her goddamn head. It, it fucked with me. And I understand her wig fucked up. That, that's okay. I understand that shit. She need to be, she need to do some damn Viola Davis type of shit. Take that shit off and let her hair breathe. Y'all stop putting that damn black glue in your damn head and eating your scabs up. That don't make no sense now, Count Von. You dressing like it's 2003. You still wearing color contacts and looking like goddamn a clown. And your makeup is a fool, Countess. I love you. You're a pretty one, but you just look... I don't know. You just... I don't, I don't like it. I'm done going in and this shit long. So Mama uh, P was going in. She was talking all this shit. And she basically telling the truth. They get the shit together. And Paula just could not take it. Um... Baby, when he called her ass a damn, well, but when Miss Mama P said, you been eating good, you over there eating all the food, that shit was so goddamn fun ice cream. But uh, he called, he said, I'm trying to keep from calling you a bitch off the street. You call this woman, this is somebody, mama, this is your wife's mama. You call her, like, even if you didn't call her bitch, just the word you said, it was just very disrespectful. And I was just like, what? She should have slapped the dog shit out of your ass. And Paula J, I'm glad she told me something. Uh-uh, don't do that. Don't curse. I'm glad she stuck up and she said, you know, da 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 and take it. I'm glad she did. So that was good. Um, a sort of flavors missing meeting up and they trying to get their shit together. A sort of flavor without the vanilla extract. Okay. Um y'all ain't got y'all missing the main ingredient to make the shit actually taste good. Y'all got nutmeg, cinnamon, all that type of shit. But y'all don't have the I still can't taste it. Y'all asses, I don't understand why y'all doing all this shit. And Lisa Neal, her damn, Lisa Neal, you are, not Lisa Neal, Golden Brooks. 
you around there pooching around, honey, and I seen that, and I seen that pooch on your damn stomach. You be around here trying to look like you a skinny girl, and you tell me counters and all that type of shit. But girl, you got to look good too, honey. So you need to be mindful of that. Don't be trying to read counters, and you got a little pudge going on yourself, and it don't look your shit like it's been hit on or some shit like your shit low that look like biscuit dough. So you need to get that shit together. At least count as solid, solid as a rock. That's what it's made for. <laughs> so they coming in. Um, Countess is going to meet him with Elise Nia because she wants to tell the girl, look, I know I'm a big girl. Watch out for the big girls. I don't need y'all, you know, trying to act like I'm y'all pet project. So she walk up and, you know, she coming in and she's like, I need to talk to y'all. So Elise is like, okay, girl, you know, I'm still moving and grooving and don't stop. And child, Miss Rooster, her damn assistant with his bug-eyed ass, he cute his own way, but he just kind of, he's just too much. He walked up to somebody. She said, no shade. She need to talk. I'm so tired of us being a damn, the butt of fucking jokes and just, kick, kick, kick. A WWDB type of shit. I hate when I see the gays on TV looking like that. It just be like, girl, I, like a tack dog or some shit. I hate to see it. It's so annoying. But um, that's what he did. So they started talking, and then Council was telling him, you know, y'all doing such and such, and y'all took me to the big girl store, and y'all had took me to Kato's Fashion, um, and Ashley Stewart, and they ain't had nothing that I like. It was nothing. All that shit looked old-fashioned. Y'all got me looking like Mama Esther. And she was like, well, girl, you know... I don't know what to tell you. You've been dressed like that any damn way. So I don't understand. But, you know, counter shoot, it, big girls can dress pretty good. I, I mean, just because you, you got a kind of bigger size on me, you can dress. You can't dress sexy. I've seen it. It's like, it's plenty of big girls out here in Hollywood dressing up and doing the damn thing. So I understand that shit was a fool. And I didn't understand why um, Rooster turned off the damn music. All that shit was stupid as hell. Um, so we get to uh, the, the end of the show, and I'm and we're talking about the stage. They're on the stage and they're talking about they're gonna work on a movie and da 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 and all this bullshit. And they meeting up and Lisa Wu got right straight to the point. So she walked in. She said, I heard y'all were Googling me and Gunk Golden, like, oh God. I wasn't doing she just comes off as very she's sneaky as shit. She'll do shit, but when you call her out on she's like, Oh, it, it wasn't like that. I'm glad Lisa Wu called your ass on their fucking bone dust face. I'm glad she called your ass on it. You ain't know how to take it. Okay. So, you know, she put, moved on and and I and uh, Lisa Wu got up there and she started seeing her dudes and started talking about, you know, I'm working on some shit and I got some people working with me, some A-listers, and she's not even dropped it. And Golden Brooks was not here for it. She ain't like it. She wasn't here for it either. I wasn't here for it either. I'm not here for the name dropping either. But Lisa Wu, I'm happy for you, whatever the hell you're doing. I still ain't seen that shit, but, you know, who knows what's going to happen. So, um, Paula J got her, all, her and all her damn teeth got up there and started talking and talking about she giving roles and started telling them what they're going to play. And she giving herself the good role, and she give everybody else some. Then she told Goldbrook she gonna pretty play the crackhead. To be honest, Paula J, you should have been playing the crackhead since you do that so well, and you're doing that well on this show. And Golden said, "I'm not playing no damn crackhead." And she da 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 da, and all this kind of shit. But Golden, what what? I mean, what roles have you played? I'm not seeing you playing anything, so I just didn't understand what was your purpose to being so pressed. At least you getting something, even if it is a damn um, chitlin circuit at a damn. Senior senior day, okay, in high school. But child, I'm glad you playing this song because I can't think of what you didn't what you didn't play in it. Okay, but um Paula J, you lost me when you talking about some I came up with all this and they're mad. You know, these folks don't have a pot to piss in. Girl, you ain't got a decent to toilet to flush, so how in the hell are you gonna come for some Paula J? Get your shit together. You talking about some you ain't got a pot to piss in, a pot to throw it out. And at least I came with something. Paula J, you didn't even have a house. You stand in a motherfucking Roach Motel, girl. You you, yo, you ain't got no luggage, bitch. You can't even go to Sears and get you some luggage. You got your shit in garbage bags. It don't even look like it's the hot quality garbage bag because the bags and shit busted open. Maybe the roaches need to come out your damn jeans and maybe they ready to... Bitch, it's hot in this motherfucker. Let me out. Let me do some shit. So I'm just not understanding why... I just don't understand how you got the nerve to say this shit. So this whole episode was funny. See, I cannot wait to see the next episode. I think Hollywood Divas is hilarious. I'm getting a, a kiki out of laughing at these broke, busted, and disgusted assholes. It's funny as hell. I'm loving it so much. But I